Hi, I'm Tasman Ropley, cosmetic chemist and trainer here at the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm gonna to talk you through how emulsifiers are different. Now, first and foremost, what is an emulsifier and what does it do? An emulsifier is a material that holds two immiscible substances together that don't readily mix on their own. These substances are water and oil. Now, there are a few different types of emulsifiers. There's anionic, which is negatively charged. There's cationic, which is positively charged. There's also non-ionic, which has no charge. And we also have polymeric emulsifiers as well. You can also get natural, naturally derived, organic, and synthetic emulsifiers. There is something perfect for every formula. They also come in many different forms, which I'm gonna show you a few examples, and I am gonna tell you what the different types of emulsifiers do and what they're best suited for. Now, let me show you. Okay, so here I have a few examples of some non-ionic emulsifiers and their different forms. So I'm gonna go through and talk you through them and what they're best suited to. So firstly, I have um, this Montanov 68 by Sepik. So this is a high HLB non-ionic waxy emulsifier. Now this is best suited to oil and water emulsions. And because it's a waxy emulsifier, this is gonna build structure and viscosity in a cream. And as you can see here, it comes in a pellet form. I also have another non-ionic high HLB emulsifier. This is the Dermophil Easy Emulse Plus, but this is actually a liquid emulsifier. So this is quite a thick liquid. So this is best suited to your oil and water emulsions, but it's not gonna add much viscosity because it's a liquid, but it is good as a co-emulsifier for extra stability, or if you wanna create more of a milky emulsion or product. Next, I have some glycerol stearate. So this is a non-ionic emulsifier, but it's a low HLB. It's actually waxy, but you can see here that it has been ground up into a fine powder form. So this is best suited to your water and oil emulsions. This is gonna help build viscosity in those. I also have another low HLB non-ionic emulsifier. This is the Arlacel 1689. And as you can see here, this is another thick liquid. So again, this isn't gonna add much viscosity, but it will add some extra stability and help create more of those milky products. So this is also suited to water and oil emulsions. And this last one here is the Bentone Lux WO. Now this is a polymeric emulsifier, but it's actually suited to water and oil emulsions. Now remember, polymeric emulsifiers are a multifunctional material. They are a really modifier and also an emulsifier. And as you can see here, this is a really nice thick paste. So this is gonna add viscosity and really good stability to your water and oil emulsions. Now next I have my last few examples here. So I have steric acid. Now this is an anionic emulsifier. So remember it's negatively charged. And as you can see here, the form is beads. So this is also a waxy emulsifier. It's high HLB, so it's suited to your oil and water emulsions. Next, I have a cationic emulsifier. So this is the Amino Sensor Ultra MB, and this is suited to your conditioning products. And like the Montanov 68, this is a waxy emulsifier. It's in pellet form, but it's a little bit smaller. And lastly, I have a polymeric emulsifier here. So this is the Sepi Plus S by Sepik, and this is a multifunctional ingredient. So polymeric emulsifiers are a real G modifier and also an emulsifier. And as you can see here, this is a nice white liquid, almost looks like a cream itself. But this is actually going to create nice viscous creams depending on the input that you use. So your ionic emulsifiers, this is your anionic and your cationic, they're actually affected by freezing conditions. And your non-ionic emulsifiers, these are the ones with no charge, they are affected by hot or warm climates. So when making an oil and water emulsion, we highly recommend using a combination of the two for better stability and good results. In your water and oil emulsions, we recommend using a low HLB waxy emulsifier and also using a low HLB liquid emulsifier. This is gonna give you really good stability and best performance. And then in your cationic emulsions, so these are your conditioners, we highly recommend obviously using a cationic emulsifier, but also pairing it with a high HLB non-ionic emulsifier. This is gonna help create more viscosity and also create better stability in your conditioner. 
Now, remember with cationic emulsifiers, you cannot use anionic because they are incompatible with each other. We also do highly recommend using blended emulsifiers. So these are emulsifiers that have more than one inky name. These provide better stability and also better performance. Well, there you go. That's a little bit about how emulsifiers are different and their different forms and uses. Now, if you'd like to learn more about emulsifiers, how to use them in your formulas and suitable inputs, please enroll into our How to Choose Cosmetic Ingredients workshop series. Or for more professional study, we do have the Advanced Certificate in Cosmetic Science or also the Diploma in Personal Care Formulation. If you would like more information on these workshops and courses, please contact us on the email below. And also, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, leave any questions in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to receive notification on the rest of our videos. Happy formulating!